Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill. I am one of your hosts, Andre Hill. And first of all, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. I hope everybody have a blessed and successful new year. I'm going to get right into it tonight. And tonight I want to talk about you have all that you need in 2020. God's grace is sufficient. So once again, I'm going to talk tonight about you have all that you need in 2020. And I want you to understand tonight that your great God's grace is sufficient. For the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. So as you under, I want you to understand tonight that you have all that you need in Christ Jesus. As I go right into the scriptures, I'm going to take you to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. And the Bible reads, as God talked to the nation of Israel, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So a lot of times we're, we're out there and we think we don't have everything that we need. We, we depend on validation from our family and, and our friends, and we think that success has to be a certain way. But I want to encourage you in 2020 and let you understand tonight that you have everything that you need. For one, you have Christ that dwells inside of you, Christ the hope of glory. And if you have Christ within you, that's all that you need, my friends. So understanding in 2020, you have all that you need. So sometimes we think we don't have what we need to be successful. We think we don't have what it takes to be physically fit. We think we don't have what it takes to be financially stable. We, we think we don't have what it takes to be prosperous and successful in this world. But the Bible tells us, as we read right here, as God talked to the nation of Israel, he tells them, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. God has already given you power. He has already given you the ability to get wealth, and you just have to recognize it and don't be running around looking for advice or looking for validation from this person and that person. So one of the words he said that God gives you power. Now what is power? Power is the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality. So he gives you the ability to do something. The next word he talks about is wealth. And what is wealth? Wealth is an abundance of valuable possessions or money. So God has given you the ability. He has given you the power, but we as individuals have not accessed it. Sometimes we're lazy. Sometimes we don't want to do what it takes to get things done. But I want to encourage you in 2020 and let you understand that you have all that you need in Christ Jesus. He has given you power to get wealth. And some of the valuable things that you want to get wealth. And when we look at wealth, it's not necessarily um, having a big house or all the cars. So you, as, as you accumulate your wealth, as you begin to become wealthy, these are some of the things that you want to get in order to have wealth. And these are what I call your valuables, property. If you can buy a property, if you can get rental property, if you could do Airbnb, these are things that can bring you wealth, land, Land. What's why would land is so important? Land is important because you can grow fruit. You can grow your vegetables. You can grow fruit on your land. Trees. Why are trees important? Well, if you understand trees, you got different type of trees. You got maple trees. You got hickory trees. You got walnut trees. So understanding with this here, these are sources of food. And yet alone, not only are the trees sources of food, people use trees for what? If they burn in their wood, um, if they have a fireplace. Um, a lot of times you have tools and they make the handles for the hammers. Guess what? That comes from your trees. What about ponds and lakes and rivers? If you could buy land on a, on a lake or on a pond, guess what? A lot of times you have fish on there. So now you have fish on your, on your property where you can go out and fish and catch some catfish or a perch or whatever it may be in your pond. I'm talking about valuables and I'm talking about wealth. You have all that you need. What about livestock? You think about chicken, you think about cattle, you think about things like that far as livestock. And you think about the loan game, you talk about stock investment, okay? So you wanna invest in certain stocks. You may be a person that, that like a certain product. You may have a, be a person that likes um, Purdue chicken. 
just to throw that out there. Well, guess what? You may want to buy stock in Purdue Chicken and play the long game as far as understanding stocks and bonds. Business ownership, these are valuable things. As a business owner, understanding that you get over 400 write off as a business owner versus being a W-2 employee. A W-2 employee, you're going to get about 15 write offs. As a business owner, you're going to get about 400 write offs. And understanding one of the most valuable ones on this here is talents. We all have talents. We all have gifts. You think about the men in the um, book of Matthew that had gifts. And one guy had two gifts and the other guy had, I believe it was five gifts. And I'm going to go back to that story one day. But long story short, these guys had gifts and they went on and multiplied their gifts. Now, one guy didn't multiply, multiply his gift because of fear. But these are your valuables that you want to have in your possession to gain you wealth. So we look at the property, land, trees, ponds, livestock, regular stocks and bonds, business ownerships, and most importantly, using those talents and gifts that God has given you. Whether you're a cook, you could be a poet, you could be a singer, you may be an actor, you may be a motivational speaker, whatever God has given you, use those gifts to bring you prosperity and wealth. As we go on the journey, and I want you to understand, you got the journey is not easy. The journey may be hard. It, you, it's going to take hard work. It's going to take planning. You're going to have to come up with a system how you want to run your business, how you want to get things done. It's going to take sacrifice. You may not can go to the club every night. Okay, you may not go be able to take those, those trips that you want to take. It's going to take sacrifice. You may have to let some of those old those old friends go. And not only that, it's going to take patience. And one of the things we don't have, and I'm guilty of it, is patience. Understanding that wealth and success is not built overnight. It's a this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It, this is a long term game. So it's going to take some patience. Yet alone discipline. Discipline. You may not. Um, you know, you may not be able to go to Burger King every day. You may not be able to go get your Starbucks coffee the way you like to. So understanding that there, it's going to take discipline. I'm talking about you have all that you need in 2020. God's grace is sufficient. It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some studying. Whatever your craft is, whatever your talent is, whatever your gift is, it's going to take some studying. It's going to take some fine tuning, and you got to understand the gifts and talents that you have. Networking. It's important to network because guess what? When you network with people, when you meet people, they have resources. They know somebody that may can be a blessing to you and vice versa. So understanding the journey. The journey is going to be long, but yet alone it's going to be worth it in the end. And the most important one, I believe, is you must give God something to work with. Understanding that faith without works is dead, you got to give God something to work with. Just believing, just praying, that's good. That's fine. But ultimately, you got to have a plan and you got to get God something to work with because if you don't get God nothing to work with how are you going to grow your prosperity how are you going to grow your wealth so understanding that there and as I move on in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 it reads the great apostle Paul writes but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus Christ has all that you need have you asked him about it? Have you prayed about it? Yet alone, have you given him something to work with? He has everything you need. The key word is that he has all your needs. Not some, not a few, not a couple. Understanding that God has everything that you need. In John, in John chapter 3, with 3 John 2, verse 2, 5. And he, the writer writes, Beloved, I wish above all things, there go that word again, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So God wants you to prosper financially. He wants us to prosper physically. He wants us to prosper spiritually. God is in the business of prosperity in every aspect of our life. So understanding that God is concerned about your life. And as I close it out, I'm always reminded about the story of The Last Dragon. Now, many of you have seen the movie The Last Dragon. If you didn't, uh, if you haven't, I recommend that you go see it. And the story talk tells you about a young man named Bruce Leroy. And Bruce Leroy, he had got trained by his sensei. And his sensei sent him out on a journey to find the master. And and young young Bruce Leroy, he began to get aggressive. And, and he goes out and he begins to search vigorously for the master. And all through his journey, people are telling Bruce Leroy that he's the man. 
that he's the chosen one, but Bruce Leroy didn't recognize who he were. And some of us have not recognized who we are in God. And as he goes on his journey, he's kicking down doors and he's in the pursuit of finding the master. Well, one day life hit Bruce Leroy. And Bruce Leroy was into, in, in a fight of his life. And many of you are in a fight of your life, financially, spiritually, physically. And Bruce Leroy, as he was going through the storm, and as he was fighting the master named Shona, so, so Shona thought he was the master, Bruce Leroy, he get this epiphany. And all this time as he's getting this beat down, he began to realize, hold on, I'm looking for the master, but all the time, I am the master. The master is in me. And understanding that Christ is in you, he is the master, the hope of glory. So you're searching, you're running around, you're looking for the master, you're looking for validation. Recognize tonight that you are the master and everything you have is within you. Don't worry about what you don't have. Worry about getting started. Worry about getting looking ahead. Worry about doing the work. And everything you need, God will supply it. As I close it out. As always, I thank God for his unmerited, undeserved favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Melissa, be blessed. Thank you.